What's up, PaleoFX tribe? I am super stoked today because I have with me right now from the other side of the pond, my good friend, Daryl Edwards of Primal Play. Daryl, what's up, brother? Hey, it's so good to have a chat. It's been a, it's been a while since we last spoke, Keith, but um, I'm raring to go on this side of the world, but it's incredible how much we've all got in common now all over the globe. Incredible. Right? Current events, right? Yeah. Right. And this is, uh, this is a perfect time to talk about uh, some primal play. I I'll tell you how this is, how this is uh, occurred in my life. So one of the first things to close, of course, were the gyms, mm -hmm. right? That was one, because that's, that's just an incubator. I mean, a bunch of people together, sweaty, touching stuff. I mean, it's just an, an incubator to uh, spread a contagion. So the gyms were the first thing to, to close, which, you know, I, I pouted around for a bit because I couldn't lift the heavy stuff. But then then I was like, well, the world is my playground. And so I'll just take a page from Daryl Edwards. And I, and it's been cool. I've been outside. I've been riding my bike, hopping off my bike, you know, just doing whatever, whatever I feel like. And I'm out in the sun much more than I normally would have because like everybody else, I fall into a rut, right? I get mm, into mm. a rut and I'm like, yeah, okay, go to the gym, go to the gym, go to the gym few days a week up outside, but I mostly, you know, default in the gym. So this has been a really good time. And I would imagine that it's been a busy time for you. Yeah. So I suppose on the one hand, there's a reduction in, in kind of opportunities because, you know, some people do want a, a physical space in order to do their workouts and they want a certain type of equipment that they're utilizing. For me, as you know, I do see the world as my playground. And I do see that the best equipment we have is ourselves, for one. And then secondly, our interaction with pretty much anything else that exists is also can be utilized as, as gym equipment. And if you have that view of the world, then the opportunities are, are, are endless. So I, I, I don't see that as a, as a limitation. I see that actually as an opportunity for us to be doing far more. Um, and if you even if you are having to shelter yourself or self isolate, uh, you know, um, there are so many things you have within your own home, mm. again, including yourself, most importantly, that enables you to be moving more. And what's interesting is you do see some imagery around staying at home, stay on your sofa, you know, stay on your couch, mm. almost giving people excuses again not to move, you know, net, Netflix and chill or Netflix and still, as I call it. Right. Um, so, you know, people probably feel there's a tendency, okay, well, actually now I can, I can relax. I can do less. I can, I can watch all the box sets that I have that I haven't been able to see before. I can, I can work from, from home sitting down. Whereas actually now make sure you're using your standing desk. Make sure you're having lots of movement breaks and movement snacks. Um, you like to lift heavy. Well, you know, lift the people and the people who you can continue to touch. That's a great excuse to pick them up, right? To, <laughs> to piggyback, <laughs> to fire and carry. So, so to do some of the chores in your in your home, um, the yard work that you, you may not have got done. So, I, I actually think it's an opportunity to do far more strenuous activity uh, than many of us have, have done fa fairly recently. Right, and, and because most of us have plenty of time now. I mean, yes. people, people are, you know, their work is pretty much for most has lessened because yes. they, most people have, you know, what I would call normal jobs, normal nine to five jobs. Um, so you have all this time and what better time to create a new habit, a new movement habit? Yeah, for, for sure. I mean, I, I suppose we've got to think about the people who, you know, for some people, they're working from home, but they may also have to be doing more home care, right. you know, more caring duties, I suppose. Um, but again, when you do have an opportunity to carve out some time and, and to have create more incidental movement opportunities. So, so rather than trying to find more time, why watch the kettle boil? For example, I've got two or three minutes. I'm waiting for my coffee to percolate. I could be doing some movement at that, at that point, um, create games. So a, a great game that I've, that I've created is if I'm watching the TV, if I'm watching a TV show, then almost like a, a TV, sh TV show bingo. You know, if a certain character appears, you do a particular movement. Oh, nice. 
uh, if there's a certain part of vocabulary, if there's conflict, you, you can just start creating these actions that occur within a, a, an episode of a show and do movement to accompany those actions. So you don't have to follow the narrative of, well, I'm watching a TV show, it means I have to be sedentary. Actually, no, you can, you can actually get some movement done at the, at, at the same time. So it's, more, it, it's thinking more intelligently uh, as to how you get more movement in your life. And I think more importantly than just getting a bit more movement in your life, we need to be acknowledging the health benefits of doing so, mm. both physically and mental health benefits. So it's going to be reducing stress. It's gonna help you manage your stress. It's gonna help you to become more resilient and more robust. It's gonna help you to, to become less anxious, to be able to deal with the, the mental health issues that can occur during, during times like this. Um, it will help you improve your sleep quality. Pretty much whenever you move throughout the day, no matter how vigorous uh, intensity activity throughout the day, will still improve deep sleep quality at right. night. So you get more quantity of sleep and you get better quality sleep, which is, in, which is incredible. It improves your digestion. You get better motility, better food transport, better absorption of nutrients the more active you are. So again, another, another benefit, you're gonna be reducing blood glucose and, and controlling and managing that. So there's all of these primary and secondary benefits of movement that will touch upon pretty much all of the lifestyle pillars that we're focusing at the moment. And we're saying, okay, I need to improve my sleep. Okay, I need to manage my stress. Um, I need to be getting outside and getting some vitamin D. I need to be focusing on supporting my immune my immune function. I need to be focusing on gut health. There's all these things that we're like, I need to, I need to, I need to. And many of us don't realize that pretty much the foundation pillar that can support all of those is is movement, is physical, is physical activity. Uh, and there is no other intervention that works across all of those areas. So it improves, it improves your nutrition, it improves your gut health and your gut microbiome, it improves immune function, supports immune function, it helps you prevent chronic disease, it helps even to prevent infectious disease, mm -hmm. which of course is topical at the moment. Right. Uh, it boosts the amount of white blood cells you produce, it uh, improves the mobilization of white blood cells, and especially T cells or the, the kind of hunter killer cells so these cells that kind of target and search out for viruses and other antigens, um, you have a, a much better job at doing that if you're active versus being sedentary. And this should come so, as no surprise, right, Daryl? I mean, we evolved as obligate movers. I mean, ex these ex exactly. bodies were meant to move. Look at these, yeah. these beautiful machines we inhabit. I mean, yes, it's a exactly. beautiful machine. It was meant to move. Yes, it was certainly meant to move. and. Now we've outsourced, movement has become outsourced to you know, technology, to labor-saving devices, to the chair. <laughs> so there are less opportunities to move now. We have to, you have to be really self-disciplined to make the decision to say, you know what, I'm gonna carve out some of my day on a <clears throat> daily basis to move, to exercise, to train, because it, it, it's no longer an obligation. Our ancestors had to move right. in order to build shelters, to defend you know, themselves and their loved ones, to search, hunt and gather food. There was no obligation. If you didn't do that, you weren't going to survive. Right. So evolution prioritized our movement capability, our general, the generalization of movement for humans, the ability to perform all these different movement patterns, some very short, very intense, very powerful, very strong, maximal effort, right through to the slowest and most graceful and competent of movement patterns, you know, um, and everything in between. So there's this huge spectrum and smorgasbord of movement. Uh, and it's really important that we remain functional and practical when we are doing our movement patterns, because it helps us day to day, it improves our quality of life. I, I mean, you know, there are so many areas of our life that is impacted by movement. And unfortunately, we're, we are in an environment where we're getting cues to be sedentary, to take it easy, to do less. You know, oh, you're a certain age now. You know, you've got to be, start taking it easy. But we know maintaining muscle mass is a, is a 
a signal of, of health and longevity. We know that. We know lowering your resting heart rate, improving your, your VO2 max. We have functional markers, fitness markers, uh, exercise markers, exercise science markers that are linked to health and longevity. So I think it's important, even if you don't know the science, or the bottom line is if you move more, if you improve the quality of, mo of your movement, if you're making sure you're getting adequate recovery, if you're looking at the, the areas that you can improve your health, your performance for longevity, i.e. maintaining youthfulness, maintaining vitality, preventing disease, um, dealing with whatever issues you have to deal with, if you are having to deal with, a, with, a, with an issue or condition, movement is always gonna be supportive of, of, of that. So um, yeah, it's, it's something I could talk about forever, Right. Um, but but as you say, we, many of us now have this opportunity of there is more time for me to focus on my health and well-being. Movement can now be prioritized. What are the sort of things that I should be doing? If and, it was a pill, yeah. everybody would take it, Daryl. Exactly. <laughs> it would be, they certainly would. They certainly mm -hmm. would take it. Uh, and, and that's the thing. I suppose that's the other interesting thing about movement. Most other lifestyle interventions – you can, somebody else can do it for you, right? You can, get a, you can get a significant amount of help from somebody else or something else. You know, you can take a, you know, you're deficient in, in some nutrient, you can take a, take a supplement. Uh, you're not a chef, you can get somebody to, to cook the food for you, get it delivered. You can probably even get somebody to feed you, you know, like to sh <laughs> shove it down your throat, right? You can get inter intravenous nutrients, right? You can get that sort of stuff. You can get supplements, you can do strategies to help you sleep better at night, rituals, mindfulness, deep breathing. You can do, there's all this stuff that you can do. Unfortunately, with movement, you have to do it yourself. Even if I get a PT shouting down my ear to do it, if I don't do it, I don't get the benefit. So this is another reason why movement is often, it's a poor relation. I know it isn't for you, Keith, right? You walk, you walk the talk for, for sure, but, for a lot of us in this space, a lot of us who are trying to improve our health, movement is relegated somewhere near down the bottom of the, yeah, I know it's important, but there's all these other things I need to focus on first. And I think the, I think the pyramid should probably be tilted the other way mm -hmm. and, and, and the greater emphasis placed on movement because it, has, it trickles down to all these other areas. And unfortunately, there's no easy, there are no shortcuts. You know, if you say, I'm gonna do a hit, because it spends because I'm going to spend less time doing it. Unfortunately, you have to work so hard <laughs> within that shortened time frame. You hate life itself, right? <laughs> so, so right, either you go for extending the amount of time doing stuff, or you try and shorten the time. Whatever you do, you have to put in the work, the effort, and that's one of the reasons why I love using play as a vehicle and I wanted to, to get things done. I wanted to ask yeah. you about that too, about the, the difference between a workout, which is how I used to always look at my training mm. is, a, is a workout because I come from a competitive sports background to where the, the training had an end point, right? There was a competition, there was a game, there was there, the, the idea to get better and better and better hone skills. And so, so training and workout became part of my vocabulary, but as of late, and especially since I have known you and known your work, I have tried to change that internal dialogue to play. And then it doesn't seem like an obligation of sorts, but something I want to engage in. Yeah, and I think I, I think they can they can coexist. Right. So I think sometimes there's a misconception that if you're if you're playing all the time, if you're just doing that stuff that Daryl does, it's it's you're not going to get stronger. You're not going right. to get fitter. You're not going to be. And as you know, you've done some of my sessions, I have. And, and, and and people are sometimes astounded because it looks sometimes it looks very simple, very easy. To and I'm going to drop a picture in this thread <laughs> afterwards of Michelle uh, carrying me the last time we did uh, primal play with you together. Oh yes, yes, yes. And so I mean, drop that in there. <laughs> in incredible. And it, probably if she went into the gym, probably no one, somebody wouldn't put a put you know dumb you know a barbell on her shoulder, right? you know, and have her a, walk around with way. It. Yeah, yeah, exa exactly. So I would do I think, that, but most people, <laughs> most people wouldn't. And I, you know, I'd be happy to do that, but I prefer, I prefer lifting you actually. Keith. Right. Actually, that's a lot more fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
But yeah, I think, you know, it was Einstein, or it's attributed to him, who said play is the highest form of research. And one of the advantages of play in my mind is even if you are training, you are working out, you have a set goal in mind, it still doesn't mean you can't explore, you can't be creative, you can't think about other things you can be doing to get similar results. So when I founded Primal Play, when I created the Primal Play method, I didn't have your background. I was, you know, I was very sedentary for most of my adult life. I was a computer geek. So training was was not something that I that I did. Right. As I became more physically fit, I started training. I started doing you know programs, periodization, you know, the right type of nutrition to fuel my workouts doing different types of workouts and increasing volume, all, all this sort of fancy stuff. I used, I used to do a lot of that work, but it was difficult for me to, for me to motivate myself. Um, it was difficult for me to, to decide from one week to the next, what was the most important thing to, for me to be doing to improve my health and longevity, because I didn't have those performance metrics that, that really mattered. And so I, but I still wanted to get stronger I still wanted to improve my cardiovascular ability. I still wanted to improve my functional capability. So for me, the gains were, oh my goodness, there's all this stuff now that I can do that I couldn't do previously, that I should have been able to do. So, you know, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, there is no way I could have lifted you over my head, you know, onto my shoulders as if it was fairly effortless. It just, <laughs> I would have been, I would have been in pieces. I would have collapsed like a jellyfish. Now I can do that stuff. And the great thing is it didn't come about by me doing lots of back squats and doing lots of kind of work just around Olympic lifting. Most of that capability came about by me lifting real people, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, sandbags, sacks of potato, mm -hmm. doing real functional stuff right. that had nothing to do with a gym environment. And so I'm not disparaging a gym. Mm -hmm. I just feel that I need more than gym time to get as fit and as strong and as capable right. as I as I can be. I, I I can't spend hours and hours in a gym, but I can certainly spend hours and hours throughout a day of moving right. at different intensities. And so if I see you and you know our our greeting, Keith, every time we see each other is, you know, look, come onto my shoulders, mate. I look forward to it. <laughs> I get um, a bird's eye view of the crowd. Yeah, the yeah, I'm pretty, shoulders. it's like mounting <laughs> Everest or something like that. I'm quite, I'm taller than I look. But, but what's interesting is that might be, you know, if I if I'm at a conference and I and I lift and carry, you know, no, 10, 20, 30, right. 40, 50 people, that's a significant amount a of, of weight that I've shifted, but I'm not thinking about sets and reps. Right. Um, I'm certainly thinking about form. I don't want to be injuring myself. <laughs> you know, it is a challenge. I don't know how heavy somebody is just by looking at them, you know yourself you're packed full of muscle it's like first time i lifted you i'm like okay this is you know uh, this this is this is a challenge but it's a it's a great right. challenge and you can still scale it so i i find and carry two people sometimes i do you know i piggyback somebody and do two person find and carry so i I've, i'm trying to get to four person carry because i'm like again it's more to do with the imagination is right. this possible yes. for me to do i'm not totaling up the kilos or the pounds here i'm just thinking I wonder if I can carry four people, you know. <laughs> um, so imagination is powerful. Visualization is powerful. And so even if you have no weight, no external resistance, you can create this internally. Right. You know, martial artists do it. Charles Atlas did it back, mm -hmm. back in, the, in the 30s and 40s, of this kind of dynamic tension. Um, and I think it's really important. Just if you just think to yourself, I'm going to be stronger when I perform the next, you know, repetitions, I, I think studies say you can get like 10 to 15% increase in performance, strength of performance, just by telling yourself, I'm going to be stronger next time I do this. Right. I mean, pretty, pretty incredible uh, difference in, in, in performance. So engaging your mind, being more playful, seeking out opportunities. I do sprints, right? As you know, I'm sure you've done, you know, wind sprints and stuff before. It is 
it, it's it's uncomfortable. I don't want to say painful. It's certainly uncomfortable. You really have to get yourself into a mindset of I'm going to do this for eight times, 60 right. meters, 100 right. meters, recover for five minutes, and then go for it again. Right. Um, for me, I can't do that. What I can do, and I'm not advocating this because I don't want anyone to get arrested, I do something called chase the jogger. So I see somebody a couple of hundred meters away who's jogging, and I'll sprint flat out. I, I'll usually stop 20, 30 meters <laughs> behind them. <laughs> uh, but, like, I will – there a gazelle, I'm the cheater, but I've, I've, I'm off. And I tell you something, I, I cannot run that fast by me just saying, I'm going to right. do some sprint training. You know, I need some purpose. So I do a chase the jogger. <laughs> um, I also sprint against buses sometimes. So right. I'm like, I'll miss the bus. And I'm like, okay, I've got to get to the next bus stop. And I'll be flat out. People are laughing usually on the, you know, they're either rooting for me on the bus. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Or they're like, look at that guy pretending he's Usain Bolt. The bus driver apologizes, you know, uh, you know, are you okay? Because I'm, I'm out of breath. No, no, I didn't, I didn't need, actually need the bus. I was just, <laughs> it, was just a, it was just a challenge. But yeah, I've, I've just created all of these. I've kind of gamified yes. my approach to movement, which enables me still to do that stuff, which is very challenging very demanding because you need to increase, as you know, you need to increase the load to your body physically, the physical stressor for adaptation to occur. Um, and you need to make sure you vary that so you don't overtrain, you know, uh, right. you know, so, so yeah, all of those things, all of the science, all of that is really important. The only difference for me is how do I, how do I get there? Uh, um, and how do I get there in a way which I can enjoy? And I can share that with others who feel the same way um, and who don't feel like now, oh, there's no gym. What am I going to do? I'm like, well, it's the same for me. <laughs> you know, right. like, You're like, yeah, whatever. there's no change. Right. Yeah. My living room is my is, is my gym. Um, and and I, Daryl, yeah. I do think it's very important that people and again, to reiterate, you did not come from a sporting background. I mean, you, you came in and your story is super, super interesting in and of itself, how you made a career and lifetime change. I mean, just a, mm. just a 180, which I think is incredible, but I, but I think it's a powerful story that for everybody that it's, you know, it's a cliche, but it's never too late to start. Oh it's yes. Never too late. It's never. It, it really is never too late. And I'm, I'm thankful that I didn't have that background. I was not a jock. Right. I was, I was certainly a nerd. I mean, I played a lot when I was a kid, <clears throat> like most kids did when I was young. But I certainly didn't excel. You know, I, I I managed to play for the school basketball team, but I was definitely, you know, I just about got into the team. Right. You know what I mean? Um, that was about that was my limit. That was my limit right there. But what's interesting in my twenties, I remember struggling to do like one or two push-ups. I mean, it was that that was a struggle. The first time I went into the, I started working in the gym, and I was like, okay, I'm going to do some deadlifts. And I remember doing uh, 40 kilo, about 80, 80 pounds or so. I, I remember doing a 40 kilo deadlift and literally jumping for joy that I could lift something that, that heavy. Right. And of course, you know, that number may not mean anything to you, but if you, if you are somebody who deadlifts, you'll know that's pretty much not much more than the bar itself. Right. Uh, uh, um, and you certainly should be able to lift you know, yourself, double your body weight mm -hmm. easily. But I remember when I started doing maximal lifts and I, I was deadlifting like 500 pounds like plus, right. and I'm not certainly not built for a deadlift, but it just shows you how much cape potential right. we have. And, and as I say, I wasn't gifted. I wasn't, I wasn't a jock. I didn't, you know, I had to work hard to, 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 to get there, but I certainly, it certainly wasn't an easy road for me. Um, but it shows what's possible. And when you have a love and a passion for something, then it's amazing what you can achieve. So for movement, I believe we all, we all have a superhero inside of us. And, and that superhero has weaknesses. They have kryptonites. They have things that they can never ever compensate for. You know, Superman can do nothing about kryptonite. There's right. nothing he can do. He can't do anything about his love for Lois Lane. You know, he can't do anything about his desire to help humanity. That those of 
those drive him to to do the things that he does. You know, Lex Luthor will always be his arch nemesis. There's nothing he can do about that. And I I see movement in a very very similar way. You know, what am I really good at? Really strong at? Really capable at? What are some of the things that I can work on and tweak? And there are other areas where you're like, Daryl, it doesn't matter how much time you spend <laughs> working on that, you are ne- you are really not going to get much benefit out of <laughs> out right, of your right. time, you know. So so again, and I that's think okay. Yeah, and that's and that's okay. perfectly right. that's perfectly okay. So so yeah, I think you know, given movement is such a powerful tool, it's not something you can take as a pill, unfortunately. Uh, and there's nothing even close. You have to do the work. And if you're doing that work or play, um, then you have to do, make sure it's of the right quality. And when I say the right quality, I'm talking about the amount of time you spend, the amount of movement patterns you engage in, making sure you're motivated to want to do it again. So you don't have these kind of peaks of activity and then you're like, oh, I'll do it again next Monday or maybe the Monday after. You find something that's sustainable and treat movement like you would a well-balanced, nutritious plate. You know, uh, for you and I, probably liver, we would say liver is one of the most nutritious foods available, right? Has pretty much every single nutrient, you know, packed into Mm -hmm. beef liver, say, or lamb's liver. But... It doesn't contain all nutrients. Right. There are st- there are still things that are lacking. So if I just ate beef liver every single day, at some point I would have some nutrient deficiencies. It's similar to movement. If I just do burpees all the time, thinking, "Oh my gosh, what an amazing exercise," but I just keep on doing burpees, there's no way I'm going to achieve maximal strength. Right. There's no way I'm going to be achieving maximal endurance and stamina. I'm going to be very good at doing very vigorous activity, full body performing that movement pattern i'm not going to be proving my balance capability not going to prove my agility or my speed necessarily mm-hmm. there's you do know what i'm saying so right. your plate if you're going to fashion your plate make sure there's some speed some power some endurance some balance some coordination you know um lots of joy <laughs> um make sure there's adequate adequate recovery make sure there are things that you want to do with other people because we're social Right. Creatures, not just, don't just do it by yourself. If you're in isolation, hopefully you're in isolation with other family members. So do some partner-based workouts or, or playouts. Change your environment. You know, just seeing four walls. We know it's healthier to to see to be in nature, right? So if you right. can get outside, get outside into nature. You boost the amount of serotonin that's produced. You hopefully get access to vitamin D more so in Austin than you do here in London. But it's still it's still accessible. Uh, and that improves your immune function too. So, yeah, it's a one movement is a wonderful thing. I really believe we don't give it enough credence, uh, and that's not. I know that's not the case for yourself, right. but I think I'd say in general in the health community, it's certainly like the poor relation. It's like the Cinderella of of health and well being. You know, like you know it's doing the job, but it's like the ugly sisters get <laughs> tend to get more of the. <laughs> get more of the credit um, uh, and it's like, well, no, no, Cinderella is doing a great job behind the scenes, not, not, not getting the glory, but actually really doing the work. And so, if you have, yeah. if you have <laughs> kids or nieces, nephews, young people who look up to you, children model actions much more than they model or, or that they will listen to words, right? So that it, if they yeah. see a role model actually doing this stuff and working, it, it clicks to them and they will oh, want yes. to mirror that. So uh, a, a couple of days ago, I was at the University of Texas. There's a wide open field out there at the University of Texas. It's a few miles from where we live here in Austin. And there's an assortment of bars and all kinds of stuff to play on and a nice field to sprint on. So I had a, I had a system where I was doing sprints. So I'd come back and, and um, play on the bars and just, you know, just playing, messing mm. around. And there was a father, I'm assuming it was a father, a father out there with three boys. And they were, they were jumping up on the handrails, balance. Mm. And walking to the other side, and I thought, I wonder where they got that idea. <laughs> but I, but I love yeah. that. I mean, that's yeah. yeah. like, yes, thank you, yes. sir, for teaching your children that. Yeah, ex- I mean, exactly. It's, it's you know, when you when you see other 
like the big cats, for example, you know, they will play with their young. You know, they don't say after a certain age, you know, I'm really important. I'm a big, I'm a big cat now. I don't take part in those childlike right. behaviors. I don't want to play anymore. They still play. Of course, they do the serious stuff of hunting and, and right. you know, they still find time to play. They still play fight with their young. And I think it's really important for, for us as adults to continue to do roughhousing, you know, with our kids, to teach them certain, you know, humans are, are one, one of the mammals that need a significant amount of input from our peers to develop our physical ability and capability. Right. There are certain movement patterns. If you do not, if you do not obtain a certain amount of physical literacy at certain milestones, you can never, I will, I'm going to say this again, you can never mm -hmm. ever achieve them. Right. Ever. You know, really important. It's really, really important to note. So, so there's a reason why we have this significant amount of, of, of gestation in the womb to the significant period of time going from child to, to adult like because it takes time to develop these skills and abilities and for us to fully form. And what's really incredible is how many times do we say, or you've heard people saying, oh, wouldn't it be great to squat like a, like a baby? Wouldn't it be great to be able to have all that energy I had when I was, mm. a, when I was a kid? And hold on a second, most of the animal kingdom they're, they're, they're not in their at their peak when they're cubs or when they're puppies right. or when they're, <laughs> they're young. They're at their peak when they're in adulthood. Mm -hmm. They can outperform in every single way what they did as a youngster. We, we've got this kind of the wrong way around, I would say. You know, we shouldn't be a, – a, a, a toddler should be saying, I want to squat like him when I'm older. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, yep. <laughs> you know – I want to have that movement capability and that power and grace and all right. the things that comes to movement. That's what that's the way around it, it should be. So we we are constraining our kids in many in many many ways. They're play deprived. They're certainly movement deprived. They're becoming more attached to screens and technology that reduces the amount of movement time. And they'll get to a certain age where they won't be able to do things. Where they're going to be so handicapped. By their lack of movement as kids, the lack of having role models, I, I you know, I have no idea what to do, mm. that they'll be, they'll be compromised, their health will be compromised, you know, so yeah, so it's never too late in, in many respects, but at the same time, it's not an excuse to say, I'll delay this for as long as possible, because there may never be the right, the right sort of, sort of time. So, and it's not just about the physical, it's also about cognitive function, right? Children are better academically when they move. They can focus more. They can concentrate more. They're less likely to have ADHD and, and, and autism spectrum disorders. They're less likely to have to suffer from bullying. They're less likely to be bullies themselves. Right. They're more likely to be emotionally capable. They're more likely to be able to get on with their peers, to have discussions, to resolve conflict, to manage risk. You know, less likely to self harm. Less likely to to you know have issues in terms of adjusting to adulthood. There are all of these significant benefits when you compare sedentary children um, and active children that have nothing to do with, with the physical, you know, right. but everything to do with the social, emotional intelligence of, uh, of, of, of humans. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great opportunity to, to, to have this discussion with you, Keith, because as, as I've said, it, it's rarely, we rarely tend to hear this type of subject matter when it comes to movement. You know, it's right. how do you look, you know, it, it may be about performance, uh, looking good naked, mm -hmm. but there's this whole other spectrum of, of movement benefit that I certainly do a lot, spend a lot of time trying to educate and advocate and have a lot of information on my website, a lot of research uh, in relation to the, to the movement being, being medicine. Um, and I suppose I should also, have an opportunity to plug myself uh, yes, is absolutely you know, <laughs> is that I, I also have materials uh, I have book I've written books my last book was called animal moves um, I will be having it by the time this goes out in the next day or so I'm, I'm actually creating a, a free ebook guide like an introduction to animal moves that people can can uh, act can download and and kind of introduce themselves to moving like an animal to become more human 
and and to explore how you can become more playful and how you can be experiment with movement and have more joy for movement. So I have a book called Animal Moves. I have some products. Uh, oh yeah, actually I might as well show this as well. So this was this was released. Uh, oops, <laughs> um, oh, nice. fairly recently. So I have basically like decks of cards yes. that um, use animal moves as the inspiration. And I've got these cards now for different age groups. So very young children are three to six. I've got a junior version from seven to 14, uh, a version for adults, a version for group for groups, um, and also one for office-based workers. So if you're standing at a desk and you're bored of doing like silly stretches like right, this right. at your desk, or, or thinking I need to wear a yoga, get a yoga mat and, and lycra. Actually, no, you can be wearing your normal workout work wear and still do things that will be useful and helpful for the body without looking too uncomfortable in front of your peers or your family members, right? <laughs> so, so yeah, so the, these packs are designed to create either full blown workouts or playouts or just to have one or two opportunities to get movement snacks. Uh, in 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 your day. So um, let me start. Actually, I'm going to pick a card. Actually, whilst we're here. So uh, so yeah, here's here's one. So this is called the this is called the bear pose, right? So so you're literally just holding yourself in kind of a bear just before you do a bear crawl, and and it will give you sort of timings for beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And you can create different types of games. So you can kind of tag team, or you can create a circuit. So it just makes it randomizes, I suppose, your your workouts or your playouts. It makes and it a little bit more interesting. And I've um, seen you, Gerald, take a basic a basic stance, a basic movement like that, and again gamify it. Now play tag. Now yes. uh, alternate slapping hands. Um, I, I mean, really anything you can imagine, you can do with this, which is cool too, and that keeps it fun again yeah it keeps it, it keeps it fun and, and interesting and and um and you know and hopefully in a way that doesn't patronize people <clears throat> you know i i don't want to be an advocate for hey let's just go outside and roll around in the hay and isn't life fun and glorious hey you know <laughs> isn't play fun yeah that is one aspect of play but if you look at children if you look at young kids playing a lot of their play is really really serious almost quite morbid sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, let's take some risks. Let's create an imaginary hole that we need to jump over. Right. It's full of snakes. If I fall in, I'm going to get bitten. You know, let's climb that tree. How high can we get to before we can get back down? Right. You know, can I lift you in a piggyback carry? You know, am I strong enough? You're, I'm six, you're 10. Oh, I wonder if I could do this. That's, that's how they work naturally. They don't need to be, it's instinctive. They don't need to be told to create these challenges. It's just the way that they see the world. And we, as adults, should continue to see the world in that way. Right. Because trust me, you, you know, you know um, even if you are in a gym, for example, and you are using a dumbbell, and I say to myself, okay, what's the most I can get out of this equipment? Most people will probably have a handful of exercises mm -hmm. at most of their repertoire. Right. And most people that they see will be probably doing exactly the same things. Oh, my goodness. There's an infinite amount of activities that you can do, even with a simple dumbbell. Very slow, very quick, very powerful. Your whole body can be involved. You can be severely taxed by by using this very simple, humble piece of equipment. And that, so, type, of, yeah. that type of thinking carries over into the business world. I'm just going to say for those of you who think it it ends at at, at uh, physical activity. Mm. That same mind-body connection carries right over into the entrepreneurial world and thinking of new ways to navigate through the wild, wild west of the new environment that we have right yes. now. That is going to take creative thinking. And that is yes, for sparked sure. by, right? That's sparked yeah. by the mind-body connection yes, that, for sure. that, that this type of movement promotes. Yeah. And the most sex successful companies, um, especially by you know market capital, um, you know, the, the Apples, the Googles, the, the Silicon Valley tech organization, most of those pretty much mandate play as part of their mission and vision. Do you know what I mean? They have playrooms. They have meetings where they'll say, right, you know what? Play table tennis. Play some ping pong right. before you start your meeting. Let's have walking meetings. Let's have active meetings. You know, let's sit on beanbags. You know, this, 
this is not because they just want to let people let off steam. You know, let's just have some fun whilst you're at work. They're doing this because they want more productivity. Right. They want, they want less staff absence. They want more creativity. They want you to be thinking of these incredible ideas outside of the outside of the box. So, as I said, Einstein stated that play was the highest form of research. How serious was that guy? Right. You know, no one, would, no one would ever state that he he wasn't serious about his craft. If you could see over my shoulder over here, I have a picture of Einstein riding a bike. It's one of my my because I I love bikes myself. Yeah. And Einstein on a bike is like my favorite. Poster yeah, he, he was a big yeah. advocate of, of, of physical activity because yeah. he he was aware of his connection between the mind, the mind and body. You can't, you right. know, um, that the, the mind needs to be stimulated through, through movement. And again, if you look at the research, if you look at anthropological evidence, evolutionary biology, we again, we tend to focus very much on food. You know, so, mm. yeah, fire was one of the reasons why we could get more meat. And so that's when the brain really started to develop. What we don't recognize from that narrative is actually the ability for us to be able to be cleverer, more intelligent when it came to hunting, right. when it came to scavenging, when it came to gathering food, when it came to discerning what was good and what was helpful, what was medicinal, what wasn't, and so on. This approach to creativity came about by the development of the brain through movement. They were... <clears throat> There was a synergy between right. between the two, uh, and and that's that's what makes movement so important. It was it, it developed in uh, you know in a way that enabled us to have a better handle on our environment because we weren't as capable as many other animals, right? We can't sprint mm -hmm. like a cheetah, you know. We can't climb like monkeys. We can't swim like dolphins. We can't, you know. We're not as strong. I mean, think about your heaviest ever lift. It's you know it's peanuts in comparison to what an ant can do, right? right? right. They can <laughs> thousand times their body right. weight overhead, right. right? We struggle if we get if we get our body weight overhead, right. it's, it's like an applause, right. right? What's the the deadlift record? Five times, maybe five times body weight, something like that. Yeah. You know, um, thousand pounds or I, don't, I can't remember now, but it's it's it, you know, it's something like that, and but. That's the heaviest, the strongest human being on the planet can lift five times, six times their body mm -hmm. weight. Ants can do that without even blinking effortlessly, right? <laughs> right. right? So, so when, you, when you actually pay attention to where we sit within the animal kingdom based purely on, on capability of particular movement patterns, we're rubbish basically. Right, yep. You know, we can't jump very far. Right. We can't jump like kangaroos. We can't climb well. We can't lift and carry well. I'd rather let an ele elephant carry than myself, right? You know what I mean? Like, right. this is the reality. But what humans have over and above the rest of the animal kingdom is our diversity of movement, right. is our ability to adapt, to think, to change what we right. do at a given time. And we have this capability. And, and when it comes to exercise, why do we then decide, oh, I'm just going to pick out one or two things and only do those? Even though I've got access to this huge repertoire, you know, it's like I have a, I know, it's like having a million songs on your, do you remember when Apple used to advertise, you know, a million songs on your, right. on your iPod, but you only play 15 of them, right? <laughs> you know, like, you know, you, you only play a handful of those songs when actually, no, there's a whole, you know, like significant amount of and, and to, enjoyment and engagement possible and that's that so you cool. can do. Yeah. That's right back around to just being amazed at this human body that we live in that can that can swim, that can climb mountains, that can sprint, that can do, yeah. that can crawl, that can do all of these things and climb. Yes, um, yes, yes, yes. This yes, body, yes, yes, yes. like you say, might not be a specialist in any one thing. Yes. But it is so versatile. Yes, it it's so versatile. So many things well and it can adapt to yes. so many environments. It's it really is incredible. And I think the more that people realize the fantastic machine that, that they are in, the more they want to utilize that machine. And yes. Try so many different things. Yeah, exactly. And when you look at, you know, I used, to, I used to pity myself sometimes not being able to perform something physically. You know, I, for example, I didn't learn to swim until I was 40, you know, like mm. petrified of water. 
uh, almost drowned when I was about five years old. From that point on, I was like, I'm not going anywhere near water. And that was just one of many things that I was like, oh, I'm just, oh, you know, why can't I be really good at this or that? Oh, it's just awful, you know, it's just hard work. And then you start watching the Paralympics and you go, hold on a second. Right. There were people with significant disabilities, significant mobility issues that are still pushing themselves 110%. So it's not about, again, it's not even about um, what you can what you can and can't do. It's just making the most. It's almost exploiting whatever is possible for you, whatever you can work on, because no matter who you are on the planet, you can certainly do more than you feel you're capable of. You know, right. what is it? I think Superman said, you're stronger than you think you are. Right. As you notice, I do like Superman. I keep on mentioning yeah, him. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, but you know, Superman said, you are, you are stronger than you think you are. And that's very, very true. We are more capable functionally um, than we believe we are. Right. And it doesn't mean you have to be an Olympian. It doesn't mean you have to be an athlete. It just means you've got to explore what you can do, how you can challenge yourself, how you can improve, make sure you're improving your health, being healthful when you do this. You don't want to be orthorexic. You don't want to be yeah, having a right. decline in your health just because you're exercising. It's certainly finding that balance. But most people would benefit from moving more, being more versatile, um, ensuring that they're focusing on health and longevity rather than a short-term program and making movement part of your uh, of a healthy lifestyle. So, yeah, I'm hope, I hope I've sold. If anyone was on the fence prior to this talk, <laughs> hopefully I've, I've swayed them a little bit. Right. The, the Come on over to the movement side. It's yeah. beautiful over here. Darryl, do, you, do you ship your uh, the decks of cards? Do you ship those to the U.S. or worldwide? Yeah, they're, they're worldwide, so they've actually shipped to over forty-five countries now. Nice. So, so uh, yeah, they've done they've done really, really well. I'm really proud of uh, of how well they've been kind of taken. Melissa, taken on board. Melissa is at home, stuck with her kids in Kansas. So, Melissa, you can get you some deck decks of cards, and uh, that'll that'll give you a little reprieve. <laughs> yeah. So whether you whether you get your kids to use them by themselves, which a lot of parents are probably like, yeah, I need something like that. Or whether you want to actually do it with with the kids, they they are um, there were games that make either option possible. So I wanted something that was going to be very user friendly, so that the, the youngest version of the cards actually has more of an educational element. Sure. So so to get kids to actually learn, you know, everything from counting, from learning about different animal environments and habitats, thinking about how animals move, you know, the very basics of of just thinking about that to actually being active. So not just learning and going, oh, this is interesting, but actually encouraging them to move and recognizing that they can move like all of these animals that they see that they're inspired by. And for the, I suppose for the adult deck, you know, um, I do have it like for yourself, Keith, if I was gonna challenge you with the deck, I would say do every single card, you know, <laughs> you know minimal rest back to back. And that would probably be one of the toughest kind of like, you know, workouts you, you've done, you've done I for like a while. It. So, like so it. It, it literally, there's something for everyone within, within the kind of animal move, moves uh, range. And, and let me, let me yeah. interject quickly. If anyone, if anyone is, is thinking, yeah, that's great. But I live in a, a uh, very, very dense metropolitan area. Daryl lives in London. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the most dense metropolitan areas ever. And yes, very dense. And, I, you know, I have a small, I live in a small apartment and literally I have in my living room, I have, you know, a couple of square meters maximum, not even that really. So so if I am at home and I can't get outside, I, I literally use that space to do all of the things that I, you know, I don't feel, again, I don't feel limited. What I feel is, is, is I only feel that I have more opportunities if I can get outside. Um, but yeah, wherever you are, don't focus on the limitations again. Just exploit all of the things that you can do with limited space, with limited time. Um, you know, sometimes I used to get out of bed and I'm like, I don't want to have a cup of coffee in the morning. How am I going to invigorate myself? Jumping out of bed, rolling out of bed, deadlifting the bed, crawling from one room to the next, <laughs> you know, uh, get to the bathroom, stand on one leg while I'm brushing my teeth. So literally the first five minutes of my day, 
I've done something pretty intense, some plyometric stuff. I've done some strength training by deadlifting the bed. I've done some balance and coordination. You know, then I have a little breather whilst I'm waiting for the tea to brew. So, that, you know, so again, just having that mindset, I can have a pretty intense workout within the first few minutes. Right. Even challenging yourself when you're putting your clothing on. You know, like, actually, I'm going to stand whilst I put on my socks. You know, like... Right. And it's annoying. It infuriates me at how difficult a balance challenge it is. But if you if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. So maintain your balance. It's again one of the it's one of the functions or components of fitness that decline significantly as we age, right. unless you maintain it through practice. So so it isn't inevitable. Aging, of course, will happen to us all. But the decline of morbidity, the decline of function. We have some control over that. I want to quickly mention something called immunosenescence. Mm. So immunosenescence is the decline in immune function as we age. So our body is basically less able to fight infection as we get older, less able to deal with things like cancer as we, as we age. But immunosenescence can actually, we can really sort of shrink or compress that decline right. by remaining physically active, by improving our, our, our nutrient intake, by focusing on sleep quality, by doing all these things that are important for our health. And exercise is one of the best things we can do right. to reduce that, that, that decline. So it's powerful. Movement is very, very powerful. It doesn't have to cost anything at all or very little in order to engage in a movement practice. And um, yeah, it's, it's certainly... I know I'm biased, <laughs> um, but I do take part. I do believe all pillars of health are important. Yes. I wouldn't just say just move and forget about everything else, but I certainly recognize for me that the, the sort of main pillar, what do they call those, the main pillars in a, in a building? I'm not sure. The, you know, there's that one kind of like the cornerstone or something. You know, the one, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I would say movement is kind of one of those cornerstones because – it's the only intervention that has a significant impact on all of the other pillars um, in terms of the, the evidence and the research. And it's the only yeah. one that you can't buy, which is yes. why <laughs> I love it. And I always yeah. have, and there's always been this vanity, somewhat of a vanity, if I'm honest, there's always been somewhat of a vanity aspect with me and my fitness, and that's exactly it. I'm like, you can't buy this. Yes, you, can you can't exactly. By doing it. Yes, exactly. You can only get certain, it by doing it. There's a certain pride and empowerment that comes from that too. Yeah. And yeah. it's and it's great to see, Keith, because again, you're you're like a remarkable, you're a champion for, for what's possible, for what's capable by by looking after yourself. And it doesn't again, it doesn't mean that nothing can go wrong. It doesn't mean right. that we're impervious right. to, to what can happen to human beings, but it certainly puts you in the strongest position you can be. Right. It does make you more resilient and more robust. Right. And um, I've been doing some research recently because I'm, I'm going to be writing. I, I recently wrote a blog post on uh, physical activity and how it improves immune function, how it supports immune function. And that's much more about kind of prevention. But I've been also been looking at research on people who have been dealing with, say, COVID-19, for example, mm -hmm. uh, and levels of fitness. So basically, if you're physically active, you're five times less likely right. to die of, of COVID-19 and the coronavirus based on that. So, so, so the underlying mechanisms that make you more robust based right. on, you know, everything from improving lung function. So your lung function is better. You're going to be less likely to have the kind of cytokine storm, you know, the inflammation right. storm that can occur. Your body's less likely to have elevated information, systemic information, if you're physically if you're physically active. You're less likely to have high blood pressure. You're less likely to have poor lipid profiles because your cardiovascular profile will be better if you're if you're healthier. You're gonna have a stronger heart. You know, so there's all of these indirect benefits right. as to why physical activity uh, is beneficial. And there's now some research coming out pointing to, to to some of those cases so something i'm going to be i'm going to be reporting on in, in the near future but it just fascinates me because almost the more you the digger you know deeper you dig there's just more and more supporting evidence suggesting there were no areas where movement isn't important there's um, no negative yeah. there's no drawback there's no yeah there's no side effect in fact the uh all the side effects are 
pretty cool too. Looking good <laughs> yeah. naked is not a bad side effect. Yeah, exactly. It's a it. side benefit, I would say. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah. Take, you know, whether you take it once a day or several times a day, uh, you know, like, <laughs> again, regardless of your dose, hope, as long as you're hitting the minimal dose, right? the, the minimal effective dose, that's going to be maximizing your health benefits. As long as you don't overdose, which pretty much, you know, the only way you're going to overdose pretty much is by not sleeping. Right. <laughs> and and only ever doing the most intense, most, you know, uh, fit, you know, physically aggressive activity all of the time. Right. If you're doing that, of course, there are going to be drawbacks. But if you're having good quality movement, uh, adequate quantity of movement that you can recover from, that you can maintain good health, that you're not going to be chronically stressed, there's pretty much no, no drawback, nothing negative of being in that situation. And I would certainly say for those who are concerned about, oh, but what about my adrenals? What about me? You know, what if I overly stress myself? You've got to do so much work to be in that category. And if you don't believe me, just think about what the average elite athlete does. Mm. Six to eight hours of relentless training per day, pretty much. They don't have increased incidences of burnout, of adrenal fatigue, of they, they don't, they don't have that. If anything, and another, thing, <laughs> and, and another thing that they don't have is outside incredible outside stressors too. So they, yes. they are very, very good at mitigating stress, not just yes. training stress, but outside world stresses as well ex ex exactly that so is that's true. really important so they they you know of course they recognize the importance of nutrition to support their their function they recognize the importance of sleep because sleep is when the body recovers and repairs itself so i always i've always maintained this and i continue to do so there is no such thing as overtraining it's only under resting yes it's under recovery Absolutely. That's the, that's the issue. So, of course, if you're sleep deprived, if you're working, you know, 20 hour days, highly stressed out, literally, you know, about to blow a gasket every time right. you do it. You, and then you decide, right, I'm going to do two, three hours. You know, I'm going to run a marathon every time I go to the gym on a treadmill. Uh, well, you know, of course, you, <laughs> there's, there's a weak link right there. You're not able to recover right. from your physical activity. You are not going to become stronger because your body's not preparing itself. Your immune system is not going to be given a chance to recover and repair. So, you know, so, yes, yeah, so I think the sweet spot um, is is a pretty broad spot for many people. That's, mm -hmm. what, that's, the, that's the point. It's very rare. There's always an exception, but most of us do not live in the, in the exceptional area. Most of us can prioritize and should pri be prioritizing their sleep anyway. They should be focusing on a nutrient-dense diet anyway. They should be thinking about mitigating stress anyway. You know, right. They shouldn't be focusing on just one thing, You know, just food or just exercise, or I can sleep my way out of poor nutrition or, or sedentary lifestyle. N no, no matter how, no matter how, how right. good your the device in your hand tells you your sleep quality was, <laughs> you know, it's not going to undo um, the other missing areas of a healthy lifestyle. So, right. so yeah. Well, Daryl, I have, uh, this was originally going to be a half hour, but I've <laughs> now kidnapped you for a, for an entire hour. <laughs> it, was, it seemed like 10 minutes. It was, yeah, you've got to tell me to zip, to zip it sometimes, Keith, but it was, it, it was, I'm, I'm glad it was useful. It was certainly, yes. um, I got, I managed to get a lot of, lot of information out there. If people want to double check what I've said, cause I don't want to believe my opinion. I, I have a significant amount of evidence on my website. I put a lot of citations and the like within within my books, and um, and certainly come along to primalplay.com right. and have a play around. So I I hope even coming to my site is is a quite a playful experience, but a very serious playful experience as well. And I think uh, your own body, your own mind, your own attitude is the best judge of this. So kind of like the paleo diet, give it 30 days, see how you look, feel, and perform after that. Yes, for sure. I mean, and but... Yeah. And I would just say, actually, you know what? I, you know, I disagree, Keith. Give it the until the end of your days. Yes. Don't put a well, cap. Do not put a cap on <laughs> right, this. Right, right, right. Because honestly, we, you and I know, right, psychologically, most 30-day challenges, people will do the 30 days, They'll go back to their previous lifestyle and they'll dip in and out of, oh my right, gosh, right, I need right. to improve things again. So, so not against challenges, but I think if you're embarking on 
a love affair with exercise because people can fall out of love with exercise far quicker than a change in diet, in my opinion, sure, yeah. right? 30 days is a long time if you hate exercise, if you right. hate the thought of doing that, get, you know. So you need to make sure from day one, from day, from ground zero, you find something that you can fall in love with. Not one night stand, not a brief dalliance, but, you know, not right, a 30 right, right. day love affair, but a lifelong love affair with movement. I like and, that, Daryl, you know, I love that, fall so, in love. Fall yeah. in love with it. Yeah. Fall in love with movement. And in that way, you you it'll be with you until the end of your days. You know, and it's something you're going to be constantly be passionate about. You know, that's what you want it to be, a part, a real part of your lifestyle, because it is part of your DNA. That we can't escape from. Right. We just need to actualize that. We need to realize that through practice. So forget about 30 days with this with movement. Think about the long haul. Right. However, you how long, however long you're going to be here on the planet make sure you fall in love if if you you know if there's one relationship you want to maintain it's certainly a lifelong love affair uh, with movement absolutely well said and that's a great way to wrap daryl i plan on being on the earth for at least another hundred years and i want to be a viable um moving piece of work for that next hundred years and i fully intend to fully intend to do that there's no reason why not well, if you if if I'm around with you, Keith, I'm I'm gonna still aim to find and carry you. Yes. So that's my. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hold you to it. I'm gonna yeah. hold you to it. We'll be in our. We'll be in our, You know, hopefully towards the end of the century, we'll be like, you know, let's see if I can get you onto my shoulders. Uh, yeah, my knees are creaking a bit, but I reckon I can still do this. And I'm sure you will. <laughs> that's the plan. That's the plan. That's the plan. All right, guys. We will see you later with another live. I don't know who the next one is today. I think Michelle has one coming up, but I have thoroughly enjoyed my time with Daryl Edwards. And if you ever have an opportunity to work with Daryl live, it is fabulous. It's absolutely fantastic. My only issue with Paleo FX is it's, there's so much going on that I can't take time to go do it. But every time that I have been able to do it at other events that I'm not responsible for putting on, um, it's just a just a blast. Daryl makes it so much fun, and that is what's so important. If you can't see Daryl live, and if you want to get information otherwise, we'll have links um, somewhere in here. I think it's in the comments maybe or up in, in the uh, – Discussion part, I can't see from the uh, platform we're on right now. But if it's not, we will have a link to uh, to Daryl's stuff. And uh, if all of that fails, a Google search will find the man. Daryl Edwards, yes. Primal Play. Thank you so much, Keith. It's been a real pleasure. Absolutely, Daryl. Have a good one, my man. I hope to see you again soon. Yes, for sure. Take right. care. Take right care, on. Keith. Give my guards to Michelle. Absolutely. we Will do. Cheers. Bye-bye.